start off right away again with the numbers page. I hope you all had a good week uh, reselling. Um, mine was so-so, as you can see. I didn't really get a feel throughout the week of like it was a good week or a bad week or anything. Um, but yeah, it was a lot lower than last week. Um, I did have a couple days, I mean, not that it's an excuse, but I did have a couple days with different doctors, dentist appointments and things like that. Um, but I had some good solid listing days as well. So, you know, it could just be, it's February. That's just, you know, generally not the greatest time of year for reselling. We're kind of at this in-between thing. I sometimes notice sales start going down a little bit in February because you've, you're coming off of that, that last fourth quarter where we were selling lots of coats and jackets and, you know, winter clothing is more heavy duty. And so it usually sells for better prices. We're transitioning kind of into, as we're coming into spring and, um, you know, less of those types of items are being bought and sold. It's not like they're not selling. Um, we did sell a jacket or two this week, but um, I think they're just, you know, not going at the level that they were in December and November and things like that. So another factor, my husband was busy with some jobs. He did do some listing, but not maybe as much as he usually does. So he was finishing up some uh, some work that he had had outside the house. So that's totally good because that's the income and it all seems to always balance out. So as you can see, we sold 32 items. Um, eBay was about $614. So as usual, it's our main source of reselling income. Uh, Poshmark was kind of slow. Poshmark's been having all sorts of issues this week. Um, they, yeah, anyway, <laughs> um, they, I ended up selling a few items there for $153. Etsy actually did pretty good. Most of it came from my husband's shop. So we got $230 from Etsy added to our income. And then I had a few sales on Ruby Lane, um, which totaled $85. Nothing for Depop this week. Again, I still have not been putting much work into that. Um, I did have a pattern sale on Etsy that I'm not going to show. It's just a small value pattern sale. Um, and I have not done a whole lot with that shop lately either. So anyway, let's go ahead and switch over and look at the listings themselves and see what there is to see. And as usual, please go ahead and leave a comment if there's something that you sold this week that you wanted to share and um, that you were excited about or anything like that. Go ahead and leave a comment below about that. Thank you so much, guys. And let's go over and we're going to start with eBay. Okay. I try to give this a little bit of a delay because it doesn't always seem to start recording right away. So we're starting off with a hat. <laughs> Um, this is a Callaway golf hat and we've had this listed. I think it's been listed for a little bit, not, not terribly long. And we still during this week had a 15% off sale running. So I'll let you know when the price also reflects, you know, or it needs to have 15% taken off of it as to be, to be the actual selling price. And that's the case here. So it didn't sell for 25, but someone went ahead and bought it because it had a 15% coupon this week. Uh, here's a pair of Wrangler. You know, some people do really well. You know, and I'm not saying we haven't sold Wrangler jeans before, um, but I I find them a lot. There's Wrangler everywhere in my thrift store because I live in Montana. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know. I think the margins just need to be a little bit higher for us. I think that's what we're looking towards is trying to up the average selling price of our items because we've got some things coming up. Um, my husband will probably join me in working at reselling more. So we will be able to get more things listed, but I'm also going to be taking on some other responsibilities that are, it's going to kind of lessen my time or it's going to have to make me, um, 
streamline my time a bit better. So um, these were new with tags. They're cowboy cut. And yeah, they sold. It was fine. They sold for $24. I think that was an offer. And they pay for shipping. It goes in a padded, most most of the jeans we can fit in a padded flat rate envelope. And yeah, not a terrible flip. Um, I'm pretty sure I got these at Goodwill though. And they are closer to, I don't, I'm thinking what their latest price is, maybe $8 or something. And I probably had a coupon. And um, so not too bad of a flip, but they did take a little bit to sell, a little bit of time. This next one is, again, as you can probably guess, something my husband picked up. And we had sold a couple weeks ago, or last week, we had sold the the seat covers or seat mat type things, kick kind of a kick protection type thing. And these, I think, were with, when he picked those up, these came with them too. It's the floor mats. So he sold those for 40, about $43, I think is what that ended up being what it sold for plus shipping. And he has to make boxes when we sell stuff like that. He has to make boxes for things. So, you know, you do have to kind of factor time into that. So the other ones sold a lot higher and the mats you know, they sold for over a hundred or whatever, but these mats were just like $40, $50. And, um, you know, not terrible. He didn't pay a whole lot. The thrift stores don't usually mark things like that up terribly high, at least not yet. <laughs> okay. This hat sold for $10. It was, I think we had sent out an offer just trying to get it to move. It was, you know, it's the ladies PGA and, um, it was new with tags and everything, but not a whole lot of interest. We'd had this listed for a while. And so we took, I think we had sent out a $10 offer and uh, like nobody took it, but the person then said, came back message and said, Oh, I missed your $10 offer. Can I, can I do that? So we ended up adding best offer to the listing and they offered us 10 and we took it. I tried to send them the $10 offer again and it wouldn't let me. So that was our workaround for that. Paul Smith. This was kind of an interesting piece. I had this listed since last year. Um, I picked it up cause it was linen. I don't really know the name, you know, I don't know much about that name. Paul Smith looks kind of fancy and, um, made in Italy. That's always a nice thing, but it was listed for a while. I don't think it had like a, I mean, maybe it has a bigger following. I, I want to say it's a British, more of a British company. I could be making that up. You know, when you research things like a year ago, then it's hard to remember. <laughs> okay. So it actually sold for $42. I took an offer. Actually, what had happened was since I have the 15% coupon running right now, I, um, when I sent out any offers, I had to send out 20% offers to make that make sense. So I wasn't sending out offers on any like newly listed items, but if something popped up as eligible to send an offer to, and it was like an older listing like this one, then I was like, you know what, I'm going to try like 25%. So I'm generally not great at doing bigger discounts like that, but I think I should be. Um, I think we, we just have, we want to move our older stuff. Um, as you know, the economy is not so hot at the moment. People are looking for deals and we need to kind of keep going as resellers and we want to be able to just kind of move product through. So I'm trying to get better about just not worrying about my profit margins being maximum, just making sure I have some kind of profit and just move the item on because I have plenty more things to get listed <laughs> and to deal with. So I might as well just make a profit and move on and keep that cash flow going. Uh, so the same thing happened with this next one, this Bowden dress i had had listed for a long time. I had come across at Goodwill a big lot of Bowden dresses all at once. And, um, some of them sold right away and the rest have just kind of been sitting here. So I took an offer for $34. I'm wrong. 
I did the same thing. I sent a kind of aggressive offer. Um, I want to say it might have been a 20% offer. And I don't know. I can't math very well. But it sold for $34. And I was happy for that. Okay, this is totally my husband's kind of thing and my kids. Um, it's Lego. It's Bionicle. They don't really collect any of the Bionicle stuff. But we were at a thrift store on our road trip back in the fall. And my son, who's not the thrifter, was kind of forced, he's the older one, he was kind of forced into hitting thrift stores with us on our road trip. And he doesn't, he doesn't mind. And, you know, actually, he thrifted with me on Saturday. And it was super cute because he was like, my husband had to go do some work. And my son, my older son had gone with him to work the day before. And so he had to go back on Saturday and he took my younger son, the 10 year old, and they had decided he was going to take them both so I could go thrifting. And then my older son was like, well, I'm going to go with mom. I'm going to go to thrift stores and see what I could find. So it was fun. He, um, you know, he doesn't want to do that very often. So anywho, so we had fun. So this was something that he had found and spotted it was a thrift store. There was clothing racks and a lot of the stuff was up on top of the clothing racks. And he just was standing, he turned and he's like, Hey, what's that? So I think we had, there was a few canisters of this, of these, whatever these things are. Um, anyway, he found these three. I think we've either sold the other ones or whatever, but yeah, these three things, you know, they're not, this is a canister and those three things go inside of it. You know, they're for your cre some kind of creation. Anyway, he found those and so we bought those and a, this little canister of three sold for $25. They're tiny. They're just little Lego pieces kind of thing. I can't even explain Bionicle stuff because it's not, we don't have it in our house. So I don't even know what it is. Oh, I'm on the wrong picture. Okay, so this got picked up at our little bins clearance center thrift store. And it's vintage. It's not terribly vintage. It was still made in China. So maybe 2000, like Y2K type thing. Um, it's Chicago Cubs, as you can see. And it sold for $35 minus the 15%. And I sold a Jams World. So exciting. So this one and the next one I'm going to show you were sold to the same buyer. So that was a nice sale that he picked out two of them. And we refunded a little bit of shipping, but we put them together and they each were 15% off. So, um, yeah, so this one sold for $85. It was called Safari Blossoms. And then the next one was a really cool looking one, if you remember. It was called Autumn Flowers. And yeah, that one sold for 15% off of 80, which I don't really want to do that math right now. <laughs> so a little less than 80. So it was a nice sale put together. 67 or 68 or something like that. And... I'm hoping he was happy with them. I haven't heard anything, and he should have gotten them by now. Okay, this one we took an offer. Someone sent us an offer for $23. I was kind of like, that's way too low of an offer from our th original 35 It was reversible. My husband probably could have put um, Black Watch. I'm pretty sure that's the Black Watch tartan that kind of traditional blue and green one and um you know a bright red one as well but we decided it was same thing we were like let's just keep things moving it's ralph ralph lauren and it's chaps so it's not hit the high end line of these it just was kind of interesting looking um but we just went ahead and took the 23 dollars to keep things moving Okay, and here's the next is one of our jackets that we sold. Um, I had picked this up at Goodwill, and it was on the rack that's near the try-on rooms. 
And so I always try to check that rack because I figure if somebody was interested in enough, interested enough in something to try it on, then they probably, you know, it might be something fairly desirable or, you know, interesting. So I always try to go through that rack. So this is REI Co-op. Um, it just says it down here at the bottom. It was a women's medium. I kept it for a little bit, but I really have a couple puffer jackets and and stuff. And so we sold it as is because there was a little um, repair done on it. But otherwise, totally usable. And just kind of a, a solid piece. So that sold for 50 minus the 15%. It was down, down filled. This was a smart wool. This is a brand that's good to know if you don't know it. Down here, smart wool. And their little guy there is the logo that you can keep an eye out for. And that's something I think I actually noticed first when I was digging through the hats at Goodwill. I saw the little guy and I was like, yay! And a little side note, a little fun fact is that little guy is called Knitwit. Get it? So K-N-I-T, wit, knit, wit, ha ha ha. Anyway, totally useless information. That sold for 25 minus the 15%. Next one, I don't know, do you guys remember Animaniacs? My husband loves that show and we actually, I think when, we, when I found these plush, I had two of them, they were identical. And when my husband, when we found them, my husband was like, Animaniacs. And so we like found them on YouTube and let the boys get interested in watching them as well. Um, but I had sold the first one. I want to say like 30 something, 30 to $35 for the first one. And then this one was the $45 minus the 15%. So like 37, 38. And yeah, it was a good find. They took a little while. Um, it's probably been at least a year since I listed this first, these, the, the, the two of them, you know, but they had their little tags and everything. So I'm okay with that. That was kind of, that was a good return on investment. I'm trying to remember where I found them. I think it was a thrift store, kind of the next town over. I'm pretty sure. And why there was two, I don't know. Maybe two kids got the same one. I don't know. Siblings. Okay, Prana. Here's a pair of Prana shorts. These sold for $26. Um, we listed a bunch of shorts in the last week and a half or so. We just kind of, you know, I've been collecting them all winter and got, you know, it wasn't so much yard sales because I listed the shorts that I found, but once the weather changed, if I sourced any kind of shorts, I just kind of put them aside and we were focused so much on our sweaters and our backlog of coats and jackets and things like that, that we didn't get to them. And I was determined we were going to get ahead of the season on these. So we got all the shorts listed and now we're trying to resist the urge to just accept whatever offer um, because it's still kind of winterish. I mean, we had snow this week and it actually was negative 11 the other night. Um, it's supposed to be getting better. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're getting some offers, but they're kind of low. They're kind of winter pricing. And so I just know once spring and summer comes and prices will be a little bit better. So, but these we were totally okay. $26 is fine. I'm good with 25 and up for a pair of shorts. And if I've made a mistake, I really don't want to sell them like less than 20, but I will let some go at $20. So just depends on the brand. Prana is okay. If they were cool, K-U-H-L, I probably would have held out for a little bit higher um, because we've done well with cool shorts. But $26 is totally fine with me. We moved these Prana shorts on. Okay. Interesting. Okay. 
then sold on February 24th. Okay, I'm making sure I get things in the right week. Okay, so I think I, I need to find another one for you because somehow maybe I X'd it out by accident. So let me fix that real quick. But let's just look at this cologne. This was another thing. We had two of them. And we ended up selling this one for the $30 minus the 15%. And I was, I'm glad. Like, I think we had sold one and it was fine. And we thought thought we had the second one listed but it wasn't or something so we came across it again and got it listed again um, as you probably know cologne perfumes things like that they have to ship ground and they can't ship overseas so somebody from Canada had wanted this but we were like you know they need to go ground and so it has to be US only you know contiguous United States and we send them parcel it has to get sent parcel select so Anyway, let me go back and try to find, because it was a really good sale and I wanted you to see it. I don't know, you know what, well, I haven't shipped it yet, so let's find it right here. Ooh, you're getting a sneak peek at next week's, because I had a bunch of good sales today. Okay, so check this out. This is a soup bowl with a like an under plate and it had this was at Goodwill for just a couple bucks. It had this cool little logo on it, which is the American Orient Express and a nice, you know, ceramic piece pieces. Okay. And then on this side was kind of this like 3D lion or bear or something like that was interesting is that it was not very old I mean they were what does it say 1999 you know so it wasn't like from the 60s or 70s or something like that but it was custom made for the American Orient Express by China Concepts of Golden Colorado 1999 so I saw some comps that looked pretty good so I went ahead and picked this up and it didn't sell for $69.99, but I took an offer of $56. So that's just kind of a thing. If I ever, if when I see, you know, this wasn't like typical, like restaurant, they call it restaurant wear that's heavy duty, um, that would have logos of restaurants or hotels or, or, you know, sometimes it's train, um, dishes that would be served on a train. A lot of times the train dishes are actually a bit nicer. They're not as heavy duty as that like diner kind of dishes that we're used to. Um, Cause it would be first class passion passengers would get, you know, a nice set of dishes on a train. So anytime I see anything with any kind of railroad or train or hotel or anything like that, I always double check it and I just think it's fascinating. And so it's one of my, just fun things to, to buy and sell. So that was a really good return to get $56 for that. Okay, moving over to Poshmark. This was just, it was vintage and I had it listed on a couple different places. I had it on eBay and Posh and Depop and such places. It's kind of hard to see. That's such a hard color to photograph, but it's like a V-neck cardigan. Um, you can kind of see the you know, the buttons, the holes were kind of stretched out a bit. And normally it's a letterman sweater. And normally it would have the big letter for, what do they do? Do they put the school on it or is it the person's initial? I can't remember. Um, but if you know, let me, know, let me know down in the comments. And then it had pockets and it also was just really tiny. So I just thought somebody could play around with that with that coat. I'm guessing it was like from the forties or fifties, you know, it had a definite older feel to it. There were no other tags in it. So I got a $22 offer and I was like, that's totally fine. Okay. This is a little coin wallet kind of zip up thing. Um, it just sold for $12. Juicy Couture just kind of is having a comeback 
these days. So I just picked it up knowing it would probably sell even if it was just a small profit. Gramici, this is a brand that I've pretty much decided I'm only sh focusing on the shorts and pants in this brand. I would totally double check any kind of shirt. We haven't had great success with selling shirts in that brand and they just take a long time. These actually went pretty quickly. We found that the shorts and the pants seemed to go a lot quicker than the shirts. And so these were, Gramici's kind of known for climbing clothes, climbing and hiking and things like that. So um, these sold for 31. Next was a J. Jill blouse, just sold for 18. It was a 3X. I just thought it was a pretty pattern. Um, Again, an item that, it's very bread and butter. So if you're into bread and butter sales, which is totally fine, you know, I feel like it's good to have a mix of things. Um, but I would have probably, I probably paid like a Goodwill price for this. And so that's too high for only selling it for $18. And so maybe if I could get it at one of my other thrift stores that has like a dollar, they have a dollar sale on Sundays. Or, you know, if it was half the normal price, it might be worth picking up. I just, I knew it would sell because of the size. And, you know, J. Jill does have a following. So I was glad. It only took like a couple of weeks for this to sell for 18 Howler Brothers normally sells super quickly. They're like polo shirts, but very Western looking. And I have sold some Howler Brothers in the past. I'll show you the logo. It's like written with rope. It looks very much kind of like the Wrangler logo um, or font. Howler Brothers, this one took a while, but we also listed it in winter. And um, so I was kind of surprised it took that long, but it could be that the, the color, you know, I like yellow, but not everybody likes yellow. And it's kind of a knit material. And I think maybe some of their polos are a different material that are a little bit more popular. So that one sold for $25. It is a name to kind of keep an eye out for though. Now look what sold and I didn't have to donate her. So what are we up to? We are up to maybe like three things. So remember that I did that video was like these things are not selling and I totally revamped. I'll try to link the video up above. But I was like these things are not selling and so I have to do something about it. So I dropped prices and I cross posted and I did all these different things and it's worked, right? So has it been two things or just three or three? Now I can't remember what they were. So I just, I know I sold this little salt lady and I sold the vase and my memory is no good anymore. So I would have to go back and look at that video myself to see what the other items were. I know there's some that have not sold yet anyway. So, but there's still success, right? Otherwise you take those five things and you're like, ah, they don't sell and you donate them. What good does that do you? At least I got $20 or $16 when I was, when all is said and done, hopefully someone will love her. And I'm totally fine with that. She went on to a new home. And then Ariat sold another Ariat, Ariat shirt. Um, like I said before, just the basic button up, you know, Ariat does a little bit better than some of the other brands. Um, so $25, I'm okay with that. That's kind of like what I expect for just a button shirt that doesn't necessarily look like rodeo or Western or anything. Now let's pop over to Ruby Lane. This had been listed in my shop for a little while. Um, it's a wall sconce and it really should have two of them. I think it would have sold a lot better if there was two, but it was made out of pewter and the picture wasn't all that great. But when you have a candle in it, it would reflect off the metal and kind of brighten up the room a little bit. So I just had that one. So it sold for $20 after quite a few months. And then this was a nice sale. I love this little set. It's a vanity set with a hand mirror and a brush and a comb. It hadn't been used. It had these really pretty little pastel 
flowers that were tinted and that whole set sold for $55. Now I did pay up a little bit more at Goodwill for like 20. Um, they were kind of in a phase of like their vintage was like way overpriced and I'm not saying overpriced. I'm just saying higher than it had used to have been priced. <laughs> um, but that's okay. I, I do have, I've kind of been adjusting my feeling about paying a little bit more, um, initially. I was talking to my husband about that. And if it's something you know is going to sell, I'm okay with paying a little bit higher and making, you know, $50. Like, so say I, I pay a dollar, $2, and I'm going to profit like $30 from it when all is done, but it's an item that, you know, it might take a while. And you're just like, okay, at least I'm not, I'm only investing this much, right? But say you find something else that you have to pay 20 or $30 for that's going to sell for 60 or $70, but you know it's going to sell and it's going to sell quickly. That's almost a better option because you're going to make the same amount of money, but it's going to take less time. And then you can move on to other things. Anyway, that's just some kind of ramblings that I had going on in my head this week. So let me know what you think about that. Are you willing to pay up? Or are you totally into just buying things for as little as possible? And then even like, say you buy something for one, even if it only profits you 10, you're good with that. So how do you feel about that? You guys let me know. Okay. And then this was a cute little cookbook. I just thought it was fascinating. I think that was at Goodwill as well. Um, paid about a dollar, sold for 10. Here's one of those things we were talking about. But see, a lot of times I pick up vintage just because I'm interested in it. It's not so much about the bottom line. But um, this little cookbook was kind of a, it was loose leaf and you put it, the person would put it together themselves. And I think it was a radio cooking school and you would get things in the mail and then you would kind of keep it together and maybe you'd be making it as they were talking about it on the radio. So that was my best guess with that. And so I was fine with getting $10 for that. I did my research on it. It wasn't worth much more than that, but just fascinating, right? Okay, let's go over to Hubby's shop. He did pretty well on Etsy this week. And I think, you know, his free time that he had this week, he spent more on Etsy, I think, than on eBay. So these are nice little votives to keep an eye out for because they're they're fairly common. They're by Costa Boda. Um, some are vintage. They s probably still make them. Um, but we've sold these repeatedly. And I think I had picked these up separately. And, you know, there are some other snowball type ones. But these are very kind of distinctive because they're... There's nothing symmetrical about them at all. They're just, they're very kind of ice snowball type looking, right? Ice ball. <laughs> but the two of those sold for 35 and we definitely get better prices on Etsy for certain things than we do on eBay. And those went pretty quickly. This little lamp was so stinking cute. I picked this up um, and what was neat about it was that the bottom... Here's uh, the bot. Okay, that's the bottom. Yep, it was a magnet. So you could kind of, you could stick it on anything metal. So if you had a metal door or something like that, you could just kind of attach this little task light to it. So very industrial looking. Perfect thing for this kind of my husband's shop. So $35 he got for that. And then we were so happy to see that Dymo label makers are still getting good money. I had sold one on Ruby Lane I talked about a couple weeks ago, but it was just a colored plastic one. These are kind of the chrome colored metal type ones. And there's one that's really metal. Like this is like a chrome colored metal or plastic. Um, but this one's pretty popular. It had the box that it comes in. Here you go. It like all fits in there. Had some wheels, some extra tape that we threw in there. And um, 
we sold that for $65. So he said he priced it higher than some of the ones that were listed on Etsy already and it sold pretty quickly. One more in his shop was this weather station barometer. Such an awesome mid-century little hourglass shape to it. Um, we've bought and sold different barometers before and um, this was in its original box. Now what I have to admit when I bought this I was so excited about finding it but they had the paper for it over this over the center part so I had no idea that it was for Burlington Northern Railroad right well so railroads okay right but I was looking at it more as like a mid-century modern decor type of thing but now you have to add in like someone might want to collect it because of Burlington Northern and you know prices on eBay were like so 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 I had paid I think twenty dollars for this again mostly because I thought uh, my husband just loves stuff like this so I bought it for him to do whatever he wanted he could keep it he could sell it whatever then we saw the Burlington Northern we knew we weren't gonna keep it so he listed it we had it on eBay for a long time and then he opened his Etsy shop again and we said you know what we're gonna put it in the Etsy shop and it sold in a couple weeks so there you go you know we always did good with mid-century modern type things on Etsy so I'm glad it moved on and that sold for $55 so that was not too bad and then we're gonna end in my my flatware shop this was I, I had some flatware sale I had a flatware sale today but that'll be in next week's I had a couple flatware sales actually one on Ruby Lane and one on Etsy today and so those will be in next week's um, but this spatula sold for forty dollars and this is my variation listing that I have active right now I didn't do it right to to begin with so it had once one sold it the whole listing had ended and that's not how it's supposed to work so I fixed it so now it's live again and you can see the short flipper has sold out and then we have these are the pieces that are left remaining so like this one's gone but any of these are available for purchase so anyway um, utensils that is such a fun subject and I'm glad I'm ending on this one because I think that is going to be the subject of my next video so we are going to talk about the kitchen drawer so there's so much kitchen stuff that does sell on eBay, Etsy, wherever. Ruby Lane. I've sold utensils there too. But we're going to talk about stuff that can... I'm sorry, I'm about to sneeze. We're going to talk about stuff that specifically can fit within your kitchen drawers. <coughs> okay, now I got that out of my system. So does that sound like a good topic to you? I was hoping to have had that video done and out last week as well, but there was just too much stuff going on. So that will be, you'll be seeing this, what sold on Tuesday as usual, and I am shooting to have the kitchen drawer profits video out on Thursday. So if you are new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can catch that. There's actually quite a bit of money to be made in utensils. As you can see, a spatula for $40. Anyway, we're going to talk about some other brands and other things to be on the lookout for. So again, I hope you all are having had a great reselling week. Have another busy week coming up. I've got a lot of inventory to get organized and to get cracking. And we have inventory all over our living room. <laughs> And we, we solve that problem by inviting people over for dinner next Saturday, and so we have a deadline. That's how we get deadlines for cleaning up our house, inviting people over. <laughs> anyway, okay, thank you guys so much, and I am going to get going and get working on that other video, and I hope you all have a very good evening. Good night.